Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new ASUS ROG Zephyrus G14. This is the brand new 2024 model. And we've got a lot of awesome changes to this laptop, like the fact that they went all aluminum with the chassis. We've also got an absolutely beautiful 14 inch, 120 hertz OLED display. It's the ROG Nebula display. It looks absolutely amazing. And the new 2024 G14 is actually powered by AMD's brand new Ryzen 9 8945HS. So we've got Ryzen 8000 here. And this one happens to be paired up with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070, but they do offer a couple other options over on the website, along with two different color variants. Overall, I absolutely love the new design they went with here for the new G14. It's now constructed of aluminum and it feels very, very premium. They went with a chiclet style backlit RGB keyboard. It's a single zone RGB backlight, but we can control everything from Armory Crate. And we do have Aura Sync here. You can really customize this to your liking. We've got that oversized trackpad, which works out really well with the form factor. And keep in mind, since this is the G14, we're only working with a 14 inch display here. So it's not a large laptop at all. Very versatile. You can carry it around anywhere you want to go. Now, of course, this is packing some serious performance, given that it's powered by AMD's all new 8000 series mobile CPU, and it's paired up with that RTX 4070. But I got to say, one of my favorite things they've added here with the 2024 G14 is the OLED display. It's an ROG Nebula display, 3K, so we've got a resolution of 2880 by 1800, aspect ratio of 16 by 10. It's a 120 hertz display with a response time of 0.2 milliseconds. It supports G-Sync and Adaptive Sync. They've really packed a lot into the 0.63 inch CNC aluminum chassis. And around back, we've got a new lighting system known as their Slash Lighting System. And it's fully customizable through Armory Crate. I'm really excited to show you how this thing performs. But before we get into it, I do want to give you a quick rundown on the specs here. So like I mentioned, for the new CPU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS with 24 megabytes of cache, eight cores, 16 threads, a base clock of four gigahertz with a boost up to 5.2. And of course, one of the big claim to fames with AMD's new Ryzen 8000 series mobile CPUs is AI performance. And utilizing the new Ryzen AI, you can actually get up to 39 tops of AI performance out of the 8945HS. With this G14, we've got 32 gigabytes of non-user replaceable LP DDR5X RAM running at 6400 mega transfers per second. Of course, we've still got the Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3, and this is great for low power consumption. But when it's time to really game, we've also got that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. And with ROG Boost activated, this will do up to 1605 megahertz. It really does put down some amazing performance. Again, we've got that 3K 14 inch, 120 hertz OLED ROG Nebula display, G Sync Adaptive Sync, 0.2 millisecond response time, and it's 100% DCI P3 a 73 watt hour battery, and this is running Windows 11 out of the box. I'm actually really surprised at how thin they were able to get this thing with the amount of performance it's putting out. It's coming in at 0.63 inches. We do have quite a bit of IO for a thin and light laptop like this. Over on the left hand side, power input, full size HDMI, USB 4, it's actually a 40 gig port, full size USB 3.2 and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the right hand side, micro SD card reader, another USB 3.2 port, and USB Type C. And yeah, it's 0 0.63 inches thick, plus it's only 3.3 pounds. Loving the oversized trackpad here, and when it comes to the keyboard, it actually feels pretty decent for a chiclet keyboard. I think they've done a good job here, RGB, backlit, and of course, we do have some proprietary software here. If you're familiar with these ROG devices, you know we've got access to Armory Crate which will allow us to customize the performance, RGB, basically everything about the device can be customized and updated from here. And these performance profiles are gonna come in really handy. So right now I'm not plugged into power. We've got our Windows profile, silent and performance. But as soon as I plug power in, we've actually got access to our turbo and manual modes. We also have access to Aura Sync, so we can adjust the keyboard's RGB. And with the new slash lighting, there's a new section here, which will allow us to kind of customize that also. And along with all of this, we've also got an update center in Armory Crate. So this will check for major updates like firmware and Armory Crate updates. But now I want to get into a little bit of performance. The first thing I did was run some benchmarks on this. And I want to show you how this thing performs. 
Single core with Geekbench 6 coming in with a 2,616, multi 13,316. And I did want to compare this to last year's HS variant, which just happens to be the 7940 HS. Single core over there, 2,476, multi 11,681. Really, this is performing more like the HX variants, but remember, we've got an HS here. I also ran Cinebench R23 on the 8945HS. Multi-core here, 16,991. This chip is looking really great. And again, it is kind of performing like last year's 7000HX variant. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3 d Mark Firestrike, I managed to get a 25,634. And remember, we're using that dedicated RTX 4070 here. We're not even hitting up the iGPU with that 8945HS. And finally, 3 d Mark Time Spy with an 11,553. So overall, when it comes to these synthetic benchmarks, it's looking great on the CPU and the GPU side of things, but I kind of wish we did have that 120 watt RTX 4070 instead of the 90 watt. But these are synthetics, now it's time to get into some real world gaming. First up, we've got MK1, 2880 by 1800, and you might notice the top and the bottom is cut off a bit. I'm not sure if this game scales correctly to 16 by 10 aspect ratio displays, but it should definitely be filling everything in right now. Either way, we're at very high settings, and when it comes to fighting games, you're going to be able to play all of them maxed out on this system. Moving over to PAL World, 2560 by 1600, very high. DLSS did have to be turned on, set to quality. You could run this at high settings with no DLSS, but uh, you know, on this beautiful display here, I don't really notice the difference. We're at 1600p, very high settings with a little bit of resolution scale, given that we're at quality. It looks absolutely amazing, and we're getting an average of 98 FPS with Power World. Checking out Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, 2560 by 1600, very high, a little bit of DLSS going here, but it plays just fine. We're up in the 90s on average with this, and it's more than enough. We've got that 120 hertz display, which would allow us to kind of lower the resolution, go ahead and lock this down at 120, but I wanted to see what we could do at 1600p, and it's really great. One thing I've really been digging about the new G14 is the quad speaker setup. There's actually two woofers in here, so the unit does put out bass, and with games like Forza Horizon 5, it sounds awesome. I mean, I've got an electric car right now, but I've actually been playing around with this game, one of my favorite racing games right now, and it does sound really good for a laptop. This quad speaker setup with the dual woofers does make a difference. 2560, 1600, I'm seeing averages around 122. And the final game we had to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. 2560, 1600, Ultra, and DLSS does default to auto here. I'm not exactly sure what it's at. It's probably sitting around balance given that we're at 1600p. But at 1600p Ultra settings with Cyberpunk 2077, I averaged 73 FPS. And of course, adding a little more DLSS or even taking the resolution down will net you much more. But the game looks great on this OLED display and it's playing just fine. I mean, I really do like the performance that this thing's putting out. So in the end, loving what ASUS has done here with the new ROG G14 for 2024. Loving the performance that new Ryzen 8000 series APUs put now and pairing it up with that RTX 4070 does make a really potent combo. And given the fact that they were able to pack all of this power into a super thin aluminum chassis is really great. I'm actually looking forward to doing some more testing with that Ryzen 9 8940HS. And you know, when it comes to graphics, the RTX 4070 will have that iGPU beat all day long, but I'm still really interested to see how these new 8000 series stack up against 7000 when it comes to that RDNA 3 based 780M iGPU. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, make sure you let me know down in the comments below. I wouldn't mind making another one. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the new 2024 ASUS ROG Zephyrus G14, I'll leave some links to their official website down below. They do offer a couple different colors and a couple different GPU variants, so uh, definitely check it out. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.